You have to do things that make you uncomfortable. You have to do things that are hard. And the, the funny thing is, like, after you do that for a while, it, it's like kind of like a sick, like, gratification. You actually start to enjoy it. It's not like that in the beginning, though, right? You have to no. develop that habit. But you start to enjoy it. You don't enjoy, like, how cold it feels. You don't enjoy it. You enjoy the fact that you, because you know that by doing stuff like that, the, uh, the outcome, what the outcome will be, how, how it benefits so many other areas of your life, makes you a better human being, personally, professionally. You know, the, mind, the mindset is everything. Without the mind, there is, is nothing else. And that's a very, very easy way to, to work on your mental toughness. Is, you know, jumping in a freezing cold thing and starting your day off on the highest note. I love it. What's up, everybody? Uh, this is Tyler Harris and Joseph Caldwell. Uh, welcome to the, what is it, episode 44 of the Sales Wolves podcast, like I said. Right? You always do <laughs> Not that. Not 244, it's 44. <laughs> but uh, like I said, my name is Tyler Harris. Joseph Caldwell. And we've got Chris Cavallini as a special guest, and we are the Sales Wolves. Ow! <laughs> All right, so as you guys can see, we have got a uh, special guest on the uh, podcast today, and uh, I'm going to introduce him here in just a second. Um, but real quick, for those of you that are tuning in for the first time, uh, we do this podcast for two reasons, and what are those, Joe? First off, we want to make sure that all the salespeople out there, it's a lonely career a lot of times. It's a lonely place to be, so we want to show appreciation for them. And, and really, we believe that everybody is in sales. Uh, doesn't matter if you're a stay-at-home mom or dad and you've got to sell your kid to eat broccoli, uh, but everybody's in sales. Your doctor, your lawyer, everybody needs the people skills to survive in this world and to take care of those around them. So I want to show appreciation for that and then also provide tactical um, training so that people can move beyond where they are. So absolutely, that's where we're at. So we're super excited on this uh, particular episode because we do have a special guest, Chris Cavallini. We actually met Chris uh, for the first time. It was, I think, March of 2016. Is that right? March? March. Um, yeah, last year. Yeah. yeah. And so we were at the uh, uh, book launch uh, for the Ask Gary V book with Gary Vaynerchuk and uh, Andy Frisella. And uh, Chris w participated in a, a little VIP deal that we participated in as well, where we got to sit in a conference room that evening with those two guys. And we've talked about it before, but it was one of the best experiences I've ever had. And one of the coolest experiences in that we paid for one hour to just talk about whatever you wanted to talk about. And I think if you remember, Chris, we were in there for like three hours. I mean, it was like yeah. 1 30, 2 o'clock in the morning when we left there, um, just getting to hear from those two guys. And I know you've had a lot of interaction with Andy since then, um, and just mm -hmm. two just incredible human beings. Um, but wanted to reach back out and connect with Chris. I've followed you, Chris, ever since on Instagram, uh, and just been continually and continually impressed uh, with not only your work ethic, but your, um, the uh, culture that you're building at your company and just the things that you're doing. It's something that's extremely intriguing to me and I knew it would be intriguing to our, uh, to our uh, viewers here on the podcast. So man, I really appreciate you taking the time to be on the podcast. No guys, thank you for having me first of all. And thank you for the, uh, you know, the kind words and uh, it is good to, you know, connect again. And uh, it's, it's crazy that that's, Time flies, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. interesting. Just, it's, it's, you just got done with a competition right before then, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, that was a crazy week for me. I actually, uh, <laughs> I did uh, the Arnold Classic in Columbus and uh, finished that. I on a flight to St. Louis, um, you know, to be there with you guys to uh, support Gary and his book launch. I mean, I was doing contest prep just for the show, you know, just for the yeah. just for the event. But uh, but you yeah. were like legit. Like I could tell you, like you had just come off, and you were you were a uh, specimen. <laughs> yeah, thank you, thank you, thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. So and again, I'm, thank you for having me on. Uh, this is, I'm looking forward to this. Awesome, man. So what I'd love uh, for you to be able to do is just to give the viewers just a little bit of background on you, kind of who Chris is. Um, you know, some people will take that all the way back. Some people will take it back to whatever point 
point that they figure is uh, is most yeah. intriguing. Relevant. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but I would just love, I personally would love to hear a little bit more about your story, kind of where you've uh, come from and, and where you're at today. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, I'm 34 years old now, you know, I'm the CEO and founder of a company called Nutrition Solutions. We're a lifestyle meal prep company. Um, you know, got a lot of other things going on. Some opportunities recently have uh, become available to me. I'm working on building other businesses. Um, but my, you know, my story is not a, a, a traditional one. Um, I'm from Boston, born and raised. Um, you know, my mom was a drug addict. She had me when she was 16. And uh, just, you know, due to some of the decisions that she was making with her life, she's a drug addict and prostitute. Um, I was put in some not so great, you know, situations and ultimately got, you know, pulled from her uh, care. Subsequently spent some time in foster homes, group homes. Um, you know, I know I spent some time on the street. Um, as a result of kind of, you know, the way that I came up and some of those not so great experiences, I, I uh, developed some not so great tendencies, right? Like I had anger issues, uh, animosities, violence, you know, and um, b before my 18th birthday, I actually uh, I was arrested 17 times prior to my 18th birthday. Right, I'm trying to give you guys the cliff note version of it. Yeah, yeah, that's both something I'm, I'm both embarrassed and proud of that at the same time. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's but, you know, impressive. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. And I, you know, at the time, like, you know, I thought it was the coolest thing, I thought it was like the badge of honor, you know, because <laughs> of how I came up. But you know, uh, I was getting in trouble, and just obviously, the state of Massachusetts uh, got sick of seeing me in, in, in court, uh, you know, Monday mornings. And uh, basically I was, I was given an ultimatum that I could either join the military or, uh, you know, go to jail for seven months. So obviously uh, I, I joined the military and uh, spent the next five years uh, of my life in one of the most elite communities, in all the military. I was a Navy deep sea diver for five years, it was definitely um, a turning point, you know, in my life, it got me, uh, you know, some, some discipline, gave me some structure, taught me some skills. I had the opportunity to work around uh, and work for some of the, you know, most elite, uh, you know, men and finest men the military has ever seen who knew my circumstances, knew my background and, uh, you know, did what they could uh, to kind of take me under their wing and, and, and help me live my life a little better. Taught me how to be a man, you know taught me how to take responsibility. And uh, that was something that, you know, is very important to me now. I'm mean, going to talk about all the time, like taking responsibility, your life is your fault. I mean, that is something I'm very big on. And this was about the time that I, I first started to think about it. Got out of the military at 23, um, you know, and at that point, you know, I no longer had structure, right? I no longer had somewhere to be at this time or somebody to tell me when to be or to correct me when I was out of line. And, uh, Fell off track. I started working in strip clubs. The reason I was working in strip clubs is because I had the opportunity to make uh, money under the table while I was collecting uh, benefits from the military to go to school. I was going to school, uh, pursuing a criminal justice degree because I actually wanted to be a cop, believe it or not. It's uh, kind of ironic <laughs> considering my past. Um, <clears throat> did uh, the strip club thing while I was going to uh, you know community college. Worked out great. I was making you know cash under the table, uh, also getting paid uh, through my month. GI Bill, military's phenomenal benefits for education. And uh, I just, I got really burnt out working in the strip club. I didn't like that environment. You know, I, I was, uh, I was getting in fights like three, four nights a week because like, I, I still had that like temper. I still had that, those like those roots. And, you know, you put a bunch of, uh, you know, heroin in front of a, a recovering heroin addict probably not the best, uh, the, you know, the best move at that point. So I got, no, no, I got super burnt out on that environment and just, I uh, was miserable. I'd walk in and I just hated the way I felt. And uh, inevitably uh, I got connected with somebody who'd come into the strip club and he basically, uh, you know, knew that I was into fitness, knew in the going to the gym. And he basically uh, told me that, you know, he knew uh, of a guy who could, uh, you know, get, a bunch of steroids, a bunch of anabolic steroids, uh, cheap. And, you know, it was asking me if I knew anybody that would be interested. And uh, as I said, at that time, I was just so miserable with what I was doing uh, there. I, uh, I, that was actually my first business venture, <laughs> to be honest with you. I quit, the, I quit the strip club. I went to the bank. I got a loan because I didn't have, it was like $3,200 was the first uh, 
you know, the first transaction. And in my mind, I was going to just flip it and that would buy me some time to figure out what I was going to do for work and such. And, uh, went and I bought a hundred bottles of steroids and sold a hundred bottles of steroids. And then I was a steroid dealer. And that's what I basically spent the next, you know, five to six years of my life doing, you know, I was making a lot of, a uh, lot of money at the time, not compared to, you know, where I'm at now, but I didn't really have uh, bills then. So I was making cash, everything was under the table. I was able to, you know, young guys going out like partying in the clubs all the time. And my routine was basically pretty simple, right? I'd, I'd, I'd get up in the morning when the sun was warm and, uh, you know, eat something, go to the gym, you know, come home, like maybe take a nap, you know, maybe make some transactions, make some money and then go out to the club and just do it all over again. And I lived that lifestyle for a very long time. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things where it's not something you can do forever. And uh, ultimately, I've realized that, you know, I, I needed to make some changes. It got to the point where I had just near paralyzing anxiety about what I was doing. I wasn't feeling good about what I was doing. I knew that at some point it, it, it was going to end. And I knew that, um, I knew that, you know, my time was running out at this time, about 26, 27 years old, where I started thinking about this. And, uh, I got sick of lying to people when they told me what I did. You know, when you meet people, right? It's formality. How are you doing? You know, I'm Chris. You know, what do you do? And, you know, I had my stories, right? My, my, my covers. Um, yeah. I'll tell you, I mean, maybe about the fourth thousandth time of it coming out of my mouth, it just all of a sudden made me feel like just physically sick to my stomach. And I knew I had to make some changes. And uh, the changes that I made, uh, you know, it was, it was two, two main things. The first was personal development was just at the time it was YouTube videos exclusively, right? I started watching everything and anything I could Tony Robbins. And then I started just listening to what this guy was saying and trying to like do the things that he was doing in my life. And uh, I also started surrounding myself with people that were better than me. One of my mentors, one of my best friends also mentored me. He told me, he's like, look, you got to hang out. You got to be around people that are better than you. And he said it like that. He didn't say like, you know, hang out people more. Success. He said better. And that was very well received because you know, the only way to get better is to just to be around things or people that are going to push right. you to, to, you know, as such. So um, I took that advice on board and, you know, this is something that happens overnight. You don't just make the decision to walk out of that life. And then next thing you know, you're scot free, but making a long story short, I, I transitioned out of, out of that. And, uh, you know, I started my business um, and things for, you know, as any business you start up, you have ups and downs. And, uh, you know, after a couple of years, I finally caught my niche, caught my stride. Things started to go, you know, pretty well. I started kind of like figuring it out. And, uh, you know, now I'm in a good place. I'm, I'm known in a community uh, for good reasons now, not like the guy who's like, like, you know, in the club all the time and, you know, knows everybody, all the club promoters and such. Um, and, you know, things are going good for me. And, I'd walked away from that life. It had been about three years since I'd uh, like really, you know, done anything from the illegal side of the house. And uh, about, I was, shit, was about, about 18, 19 months ago, I come home after a killer day, had an awesome day. And I killed it. I had a meeting. I actually just closed a big sale, be a big deal for my company. I, mean, I was just feeling awesome. I took out uh, I, I, one of my cars. I had a Lamborghini. I took out the Lamborghini that day. So that's always a good day. And I'll never forget how good I felt. You know, I, I was dressed nice, had the Lambo, closed the deal, came home to my house and realized I didn't have the, uh, the remote for my gate. So I'm like, shit, left the car parked out front of the uh, building, walked inside, walking into, uh, you know, my apartment building. There was, uh, you know, two guys within, you know, five foot me and uh, just, hey, what's up guys? You know, that's just how I am, right? Always <laughs> just personable. And uh, these guys uh, basically stood up and they said, you know, Chris, I was like, yep. And, you know, guys both dressed like you, you know, pr pretty close to, and they pulled out their badges. So Tampa PD were uh, here to serve a warrant. So I actually ended up getting arrested for something that I, that I did literally three years prior. Huh. And wow. so you guys, yeah, that, that was a whole other thing. You're in a, you're, you, you walked away from that previous life. Your business is in a, in a good place. Community involvement is very important to me. I do a lot in the community. It makes me feel good. You know, I, right. it, that was one of the things that I started doing when I started like trying to get out of that life. And I started going to, uh, you know, places where I could volunteer and just, you know, whether it's sorting clothes at the, uh, 
uh, Salvation Army or, or serving food at a church. I mean, I, I went there because, you know, Tony Robbins said that that's one of the things you have to do to experience fulfillment. You've got to give back. You've got to contribute beyond yourself. And I went and did that, not because it was important to me or like, I mean, how could it be important to me if I never did it? I did it because he said to do it. And one of the other things he says is model people that are successful. And I'll tell you, I did it. The first time I did it, I realized like very quickly that I wasn't there to help them. I was actually there. Like it was helping myself. It was healing me. It was showing me different like side of the world and giving me some much needed perspective. And, uh, you know, I was, I, I have a lot of, uh, local, uh, you know, organizations that I partner with very, very well known and, uh, you know, the different cities that I've resided in and, uh, you know, you, you get arrested and, you know, I, 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 my bill was a half a million dollars, which was absolutely insane. Um, you know, so I was in jail for a little while. I come out, and, you know, now everybody knows like literally that, you know, what's been going on. And, uh, I, you know, within, I would say an hour of being released from jail, I just went on my social media, my Facebook and Instagram. And I did a post just basically owning everything without like totally incriminating myself. And the thing is, I, I had been pretty transparent about my past, never made any, uh, you know, when I started to, one of the things that, you know, I started coming into, you know, my own and started to, to develop business, start, started to do things that I could actually be proud of. Um, I, I, I stopped the lies. I lived the lie for so many years. It felt good to finally be able to be transparent and be authentic. And just also, it, it also gives me the ability to, I've lived, I mean, I've sat at the table and had dinner with the uh, billionaires. I've, I've spent some time on the street guys. So like I've, I've done all ends of the spectrum and it's uh, yeah. really, it, it's been beneficial for me in a multitude of ways, as far as, uh, you know, understanding people from an emotional uh, standpoint, being able to communicate effectively with everybody, regardless of, you know, like where they're from, what their background is. And uh, that, uh, that process, you know, the, the Jackson, the, the city of Jacksonville, the police prosecutor up there, they wanted to give me a, uh, 24 months so two years in prison and uh that was a lot you know I, I didn't want to go to prison not because i didn't think i could handle it but because at that point i had a lot of people that relied on me you know i had yeah. at that time i think i had about 15 employees and uh they relied on me to essentially generate income to take care of their, their families to take care of themselves take care of the bills and that that really weighed heavy on me. and uh i decided to fight you know i got the best legal representation I could. And, uh, you know, we went through a hell of a process, about a three month process. Um, they held strong the whole time. They would not compromise. There were no deals that didn't include uh, prison time. So we basically just stopped talking to, uh, you know, the police prosecutors and we decided to go right to the judge for sentencing. And, um, you know, a defining moment in my life is when I showed up to my sentencing that day. And uh, keep in mind, at that point now, the, you go to be sentenced, typically the judge goes with what the police prosecutors recommend. That's the way the system sure. works. I showed up that day not knowing if I was, you know, going to walk out on my own accord. So okay. if you guys take, take a moment to think about if you guys had two weeks to get your personal and professional affairs in order to where you would go away for 24 months and try to have everything still kind of imagine what that would entail. It was, that was that was unbelievable man unbelievable yeah and honestly i don't want to draw that part out but that that was the worst the, the hardest thing i've ever had to do but it also was extremely beneficial you know later it it that going through hardship like that anytime you go through anything hard it there's going to be a lot of good that will come out of that i mean you, know, you need to do more hard things if you want your life to be easy That's right. so I was very, very fortunate to uh, have some good people that there that supported me. And I showed up to the courtroom that day and uh, there was about a hundred people outside of the courtroom that were there to support me. And uh, that was a, such an amazing feeling and a, and a dramatic turn of events. Um, the judge ended up, uh, yeah, the judge ended up just sending me to probation with special circumstances, which was, we didn't anticipate anything remotely close to that. We expected some jail time. And honestly, that, from that moment on, that's when I really decided to step up, level up, and start getting the most out of each and every day. Because before, I can honestly say, I was working hard. I was doing probably more than most. That's not really saying a lot. That was a defining moment as far as uh, making me realize, like, okay, you've got your pass. Now you have to do a lot, as much good in the world 
to, 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 to make up for the gift that you were given. I was given a second chance and, uh, that's something uh, I will, I'll, I'll never forget. And, um, you know, I live my life each and every day just trying to like do good things, you know, to, 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 to help people and like to just give back when I can. And, uh, you know, at this point in my life, guys, I, I've done more things that I'm not proud of than things that I am, but I work very, very hard each and every day to, uh, you know, to correct that. To, so. to tip those scales. Yes, yeah. sir. I love that, man. Wow. I love your story. My gosh. I cannot imagine what it'd be like walking into a courtroom that day, not knowing. Mm. High drama, heavy drama, heavy drama. You know, you you get the feeling, the pit of your stomach, like all these scenarios going through your head, you know, and people obviously that you really care about your close circle. Like at that point, you've had conversations with them, not knowing if that might be the last time you'll have the opportunity to, communicate with them in an intimate capacity for you know two years as it were so it was a lot and you know but but showing up and just seeing the people there and they couldn't even let everybody in the court and that wanted to be in the court and it made me feel really good and it made me realize that uh like you know like although like i do have a past and i, I certainly needed to be held accountable uh, and i'd make no excuses for it it was legal it was unethical you know whatever but it just put some things into perspective and i think it put some things in perspective for the judge as well um, yeah. with her seeing the sport that I had and her reading the, my file and the things that I've done in the community. And the cool part about that, if there was a cool part to come out about uh, the sentencing besides, you know, just me showing up and seeing the people there, um, b- prior to the judge sentencing me, she actually asked my attorneys if she could address me in front of the court. And she actually, uh, told me that, you know, she reviewed my mitigation packet, uh, cover to cover. And, uh, she said that, you know, she'd been on the bench 25 years. She had never seen anybody who had turned their life around and turned their circumstances around as much as I had. And she told me that I had a lot to be proud of. And at that point, that's the last thing, you you know, when the judge asked my lawyer, I'm like, Oh, here comes the lecture, (laughs) you know, and that that was a very emotional moment. It made me feel really good. And uh, so, like I said, when I, when I walked out of that court day, I was just a new person from that day on. And just every single day, you know, just get up, you just get after it, do the stuff that, that's hard to do stuff that you don't want to do that, you know, nobody else wants to do. And you just remember like, you know, you could be in a prison cell right now and to not have the opportunity to do that. So perspective is everything. And I have a lot of situations from my personal experience to, uh, to, to, to reference back that, you know, allows me to push hard, you know, yeah. all the time and go at a very, very, very high pace and uh, put a lot of stress on myself, but it's nothing compared to some of these other things that I've been through, if you really think about it. Right. Chris, you said you said an awesome thing a minute ago when you were talking about you got to do the hard things. And, and going through that gives you a different perspective. But if you want to get to anything easy, if you want to have anything easy in your life, you have to do the hard things. The hard, yes. When you choose the uncomfortable, and, and I was talking to somebody yesterday, and I had, I've had a whale of a week this week. And, and at the end of the days, I'm, I'm, I'm literally just like, God, I've never handled stuff like this. This is unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and, and yesterday I was talking to somebody and I said, but you know what, if you rewind two years ago to a hard day, then that stuff just rolls off of me now. Like it's nothing <laughs> like, yeah. like, like, like if I had had yesterday, two years ago, I would have been I would have been curled up buck naked in the shower doing the crying game. <laughs> I, know, I know exactly what you mean, brother. I know exactly what you it's, mean. And uh, I wish more people understood that. You know, you hear all the time and you see all these every you know meme on social media ever talking about the comfort zone and getting out of it. And I just really wish people like could understand what that means and how important it is because it, like, you know, people you talk about the comfort zone and people like, like to stay in their comfort zone. And I have a very hard time identifying with that statement because most people's comfort zones are like the most fucking uncomfortable thing ever. Right. right. They, they, yeah. they, they're, they don't push themselves. So what happens, yeah. you don't push yourself. So you end up in situations where you're always struggling to pay your bills. You're always yeah. in some sort of fucked up situation. And it's like, That's right. is that comfortable? Is that, it's, and it's actually not, you know, if you push yourself yeah. and get uncomfortable, for shorter periods of time, you'll be sustained comfort for longer periods of time. It's just a, it's, you know, that's unfortunately kind of the mindset of uh, the, the majority of society. And uh, 
it, and it starts at the it starts at the smallest level like you know right. like when you don't want to go work out you go work out when you you know you get up you have five things to do for the day right five things you have to do what's the hardest thing on the on that list do that first it starts yeah. little things like that and it's amazing how that will translate to other areas and organically cultivate to other things more higher priority tasks but if you're not doing it at the lowest level you absolutely won't be doing it at the you know the medium or highest you know what's funny man i i'm god i love talking to you this so two years ago uh, we got an awesome business going. I mean, things are great. Profit margins are unbelievable. Everything's going smooth. Living in a big house and, and everything's so comfortable. And I literally, I, I started in the beginning of 2016. I was like, man, I something terrible is going to happen if I don't get uncomfortable. Um, <laughs> and like, like, like everything was just too easy. Right. And so, yeah. and, and I had gotten there by being uncomfortable and doing the uncomfortable stuff, the stuff that nobody wants to do. But, it, but in my head, I switched and I start. you're going to laugh at this, man. I, I started, um, following a guy named Wim Hof and, and, um, he's called the ice man. And so I literally started laying in ice water every day just for the pain of it. Just in, just for it. the pain of it, and and I, I mean I'm, I I would drag you, you, my my wife was like what are you doing I was dragging ice dude I bags get it up to no, the, I get it yeah. I get and, it I totally fucking get it I love that I, and, that's 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 fucking awesome and so I mean literally this morning that's the first thing I did two two three o'clock in the morning I, when I get up. I will go and get in my swimming pool that I keep open year round because it's freezing up here now. And I will literally go out there and get and 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 sit in it and go, okay, you're going to stay here until this gets comfortable. Mm -hmm. And uh, and yeah. so and and I start my days. I know it sounds crazy, right? And, no, I get it, dude. I I totally totally get it. And hopefully, some of your listeners do as well. And you know, if they don't currently get it, they you know they're listening, you guys. They probably trust you enough to understand that you wouldn't say things like that if there wasn't some benefit to it. You have to do things that make you uncomfortable. You have to do things that are hard. And the, the funny thing is, like, after you do that for a while, it, it's like kind of like a sick, like, gratification. You actually start to enjoy it. Oh, and it's sick. Uh, it's yeah, sick. it's not like that in the beginning, though, right? You have to nope. develop that habit. But you start to enjoy it. You don't enjoy, like, how cold it feels. You don't enjoy it. You enjoy the fact that you, because you know that by doing stuff like that, the uh, the outcome what the outcome will be how how it benefits so many other areas of your life makes you a better human being personally professionally you know the, mind, the mindset is everything without the mind there is, is nothing else and that's a very very easy way to to work on your mental toughness is, you know jumping in a freezing cold fucking yeah. thing and starting your day off on the highest note i love it it's funny man i i and that started a process where i started telling everybody that would listen to me if you want pleasure out of this life, you better seek pain. Like, like life will, if you seek pleasure, all you have to do, all you have to do to see a painful lifestyle is go to the ghetto. Okay. You do. And all of the yeah. people that stay there seek pleasure. Most of their life, they seek pleasure in, in what they're taking, what they're drinking, what they're, what they're watching, what they don't do on a daily basis. They seek pleasure and life just delivers pain upon pain upon pain. And so literally, if people would learn to seek pain, go after the pain, go after what hurts, go after, go after that. And you literally life delivers, delivers the pleasurable things to you constantly when you do that. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's crazy. And it's yeah, I mean, when it comes to sales, the sales podcast, right? You know, yeah. mentally condition yourself to stuff like that. A lot of uh, salespeople, they have a hard time dealing with the rejection, right? Which is crazy. If you, if you can't deal with the rejection, you do, You need to fucking quit your job as a salesperson and go do something <laughs> yeah. else. Like, a, a lot of people struggle with that, right? Yeah. You know, like just simply doing the things that we're talking about will help ease that and help you develop that mind. Okay, well, you know what? This guy shut me down. Good. That just means that the probability is that much higher. The next one won't. That's right. And it's funny you mentioned that about rejection. We're reading a book called 100, 100 Days of Rejection. Or no, whatever. Rejection, oh, rejection proof. proof. Rejection Proof. But it's this guy. What's his name? Uh, G. Jang. G. G. Jang or whatever. He, he had such a problem with rejection that he literally set out to get rejected every day for 100 days. And so he would come up with stuff like, <laughs> like this guy walked into a Krispy Kreme 
and and was buying a donut and he asked the lady behind the counter if she would do the olympic signal symbol you know the olympic rings intertwined in donuts in the colors of that for him and wow. she agreed like so he started seeing so he started forcing himself so what we're, we're all reading this book as a company and we had to all come up with ideas for getting rejected and then we had to all go do them right and so mm-hmm. my my thing i had to do is i had to go into barnes and noble and and um, I don't know who came up with this, but I had to go into Barnes and Noble and I had to ask somebody if I could read to them. <laughs> so, Damn. So so I, I, I'm, I love stuff like that. I get that. I it's get fun. That. some people they would be like, "It's fucked." I I totally get that, man. And that's 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 great. I mean, literally, like I, I love that. And honestly, I'm gonna thank you for saying that. I'm actually writing that down right now. I do, I feel a good job with my company. You mentioned the culture. I, I feel I do a good job exposing them to personal development. I make mm-hmm. it mandatory. I literally mm-hmm. force my fucking people, my, my team, my employees are forced to do personal development. Okay. Yep. My, my company, I can do, I can make them do whatever I want. I choose to have them be saturated in personal development at all times just because I know how much better they will be as a, as a yep. being across the board. And that's subjective, not to make them better at my company. It's to make them better everywhere, which will organically make them better at my company and make the people around them better. So like, And you'll dude, affect them for I, generations. You're affecting generations by doing that. And I take that serious here. I mean, we force, so do I. We force personal development like you do. I love so do it. I. But my, my point is, like what you're saying, I think we need to maybe implement some exercises like that or have them go and do like crazy, uncomfortable shit that'll... Uh, Give them some mental, uh, you know, toughness training, and give me a little bit of entertainment. So. Yeah. <laughs> hey, so so what I did, I was in line and I was buying a children's book, and I saw that Time magazine with Hugh Hefner on it. It was the it was the Time mm-hmm. on Hugh Hefner. So I picked the Hugh Hefner magazine up, and there was a lady in front of me, and I had the children's book in the Hugh Hefner magazine, and I asked her which one she wanted me to read to her. <laughs> <laughs> and and she looked at both of them and she goes, "You're a person with many levels." <laughs> and I was like, "Yeah." And it's she goes, wrong. "She goes neither." <laughs> so it was funny as hell. But anyway, funny. hey Chris. So one thing I'm so intrigued by your story is is so I was doing an interview yesterday with a guy in this just in this room, and I talked about the fact that it's always in hindsight that we get the benefit from those struggles, right? Like it's always in hindsight that we realize that we became a better person, a bigger person, a stronger person from having gone through what we went through, right? And, and your story is is as perfect of a story of that as, as can be, even better because you got drawn back into it even when you thought you yeah. were out of it. And so it takes one, it takes something for, it takes a lot for someone to come out of that world that you were in but then to all of a sudden have that world say, hey, what about, remember me? And bring you back into it and then still fight yeah. and get your way out. I mean, I've got a, a, one of my best friends in the world uh, that I just, he, he just uh, passed away, um, what was that, four weeks ago. Four weeks ago, yeah. Um, was, in that, was in a very, Sorry, very, that, very, very, very similar situation and couldn't shake it, just couldn't yeah. shake it. And, and, Most and people can. The vast majority never do. Um, yeah. But... What in that interview, what I was talking about is the fact that if you look at those struggles as a blessing, like you are blessed because of those struggles you went through, even though, Dude, yeah, they weren't 100%. great, but you, you were blessed. And to me, it's, it's almost like, uh, it's, it's a huge advantage to have that type of chip on your shoulder. And I don't know how you can really convey that to someone not saying like hey i want you to go get in a bunch of trouble i want Mm -hmm. you to do this but it's it's kind of that like fail early and fail often like i've been through some struggles in my life and and i am who i am today because of that and i now know that it was those struggles that turned me into the person that i am so it's like so how do you convey to that to someone that's had a pretty average life you know had a pretty relatively good upbringing went to college got out of college got a job that's never really been through any huge struggles um, and that's kind of where I was like right out of college but then I remember oh, having life this, delivered you some struggles and I remember having <laughs> this feeling of the as like things can't just be this good this good like this something's no. gonna happen and boom it, it all did um, but 
to be able to, and this is like my big focus for 2018, is to be able to, to, to really have this be the pillar of what I talk about is that when you're in that struggle, because there's so many that are in it right now, like right at this instant, while they're watching this, they're in the middle of it. Because if you're not in the middle of it, you're either heading out of it or heading towards it. But right yeah. in the middle of it can actually see that, like be aware enough to know that, okay, I am in a terrible situation right now. But this is a blessing because this is setting me up for something that's on the other side of it that I will not be able to handle unless I become the person that can. And this is what is brought to me to be able to become that person. Um, so it's yeah. like how you can convey that to someone, number one, that that hasn't gone through anything yep. significant as far as struggles or pain. You can um, just beat them with something. <laughs> I mean, just like, <laughs> just plant some evidence in their car. Just plant and just... Some evi- <laughs> you can just plant some stuff on their computer or something. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna give you some obstacles this week. Um, you, need, you need a little pain. <laughs> but man, like I can tell like from you, like you are gonna be incredibly successful and I promise you it is because of all that and how you rose from it. But had all that not happened, probably would never get to the level that I know you're gonna to get to, right? And, no and, question, no and question. It's just like to be able to instill that in people to as an encouragement of going through a struggle to know that there is a blessing on the other side of this and I will not be in the place where I'm supposed to be to receive it, or I won't be the person that can receive it until I get through this. And this is actually a gift for me. Yep. Like, it's such a hard switch to make for somebody. Yeah, it comes down to it comes down to drive. Yeah, Tyler, right? Like, yep. My driving force, I believe, you know, and I, I was trying to dissect like my past and what's happened and why. I get up and do the things I do and why I can will continue to push harder, harder, no matter what, like I'm just never satisfied. I always want more. Right. And that, you know, you could look at that one or two ways, blessing or whatever. I, I enjoy it. Like I enjoy being uncomfortable because I've seen a lot of positive to come out of it. And what drives me, I feel is like, you know, the, the fear of going back to being, that kid, you know, from the projects, the kid, the, the the poor kid who, uh, you know, had to steal dirty clothes out of the loft and found at school to have new clothes to wear. Like, mm. you know, that that's I remember how they how I was perceived by the other kids, and that that's why I started working out because I wanted to look good. I wanted to physically look good. I started reading the newspaper when I was 13 years old. Honest to God, true story. The reason I started reading the new, the newspaper is because I remember as a kid seeing people like older people reading the newspaper and thinking like, wow, they look really smart doing that. So I'd start reading the newspaper, make sure people were seeing me doing it because (laughs) I wanted to, you you know what I mean? So like, I kind of just took that like into my, you know, adult life and, you know, just, I I always want to do good and look good. And I never, ever want to go backwards. And that my past, you know, my my story that has given me, uh, it's an easy thing to, to, to get, motivated by right to to that fear of the unknown most people don't have that but you can get drive in other areas but you have to determine what's important to you determine what it is you want out of life and then do something that supports that that's all it comes down to is drive you don't need to be you know get in trouble or you know go through hit absolute rock bottom but why is it that so many people that do end up like just winning at the highest level it's because mm-hmm. they get perspective they get something a catalyst to, to push them and you know at, at, at the end of the day uh, most times you know you, you do have to get in some sort of situation to take action whether it's you know whether it's personal or business guys and you guys know, business think about how many times uh you know you there was something that you know you should have done or you could have done and it wasn't until like something went catastrophically wrong that you made whatever adjustments and acted on that people. Act, yeah. Human beings just have a tendency to, to act in a reactionary, uh, you know, manner. And it's, it's, you know, one of those things, you know, you need, you need drive to, to, to get up in the morning and go out and make an impact. You need drive to get up and push yourself to the, to do the things that you're going to do to, to live a, a an awesome life you know and That's most right. people just don't do that they get up every day and the first thing they say you know when their alarm goes off like, Fuck, right like you know they're just not wanting to get up because they don't they're not happy they, they go to a job just to make money not to not to make an impact 
you know, yep. snooze to the last possible second and they get up, they're stressed out, bypass breakfast, bypass the shower, go to work, you know, disheveled, end up late for work after being stuck in traffic and, you know, sit and stare at the clock all day. And that's just no way to fucking live life, man. And unfortunately, no that right there made me, gave me Agreed. a pit in my stomach, man. I can't, I will, I will never be able to do yeah. that. Hey, Chris, yeah. speaking of waking up in the morning, something tangible that I think we can provide the viewers today. Um, tell me a little bit about your your daily routines. I know you mentioned that you've got the, the whether you call it the power list or your top five or whatever that may be. Yeah. I've noticed from following you on Instagram that you've also, I know you write out your goals and I know it's not like I want or Every I day. will. Like I know yours, right? Yep. It's like I am worth 250 million not i want to be yeah. i will be tell me a little bit about some of those things that you're doing at, either in the morning or at night i can tell you one of the most yeah, important so things he does is he steps into a fucking mclaren <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 and, and honestly like you know I, awesome. I can i can say here guys that i probably wouldn't have the uh the privilege of doing that had i not decided to write my goals down every day and decided to plan my day i will tell you uh, my breakthrough year was 2016. 2015 was the worst year of my life. That's when I got arrested. That's when, you know, I had all kinds of problems with my business. And in the end of 2015, I declared publicly and to myself that although 2015 was the worst year of my life, I'm going to ensure that 2016 was by far the best year of my life. And one of the things that I started doing in the beginning of 2016 is planning my day and writing my goals down. Super important. Two different things now, right? Like mm -hmm. the goal, the goals, you know, are, are everything, right? Most people don't have goals or they think they have goals. They don't have true goals, but the goals that I write down every day, I mean, look, I, I wrote them down right before this. Um, I, I wrote, my net worth is $250 million. I have freedom with my time. I've been on the cover of Forbes magazine. I donated $1 million this year to charity and miscellaneous good causes. You notice I write them down as if they've already happened or they're already yeah. happening. And uh, that, that's, that's important, that manifestation, right? The law of attraction. You know, I, 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 I write it down and I see it. I see as I'm writing, my net worth is $250 million. I visualize what my life will look like when my net worth is $250. You know, uh, having freedom with my time. That is one that honestly, when I, like I was writing down, I'm like, that'll actually never fucking happen. It's, it's weird that I'm actually going to write this. It's probably never, like, yeah. <laughs> at the way my life was set up and the way my circumstances were, and I'll honestly say, like, it's starting to happen. The last six months, a lot has opened up for me. And, like, like I don't have, I don't, you know, I, I don't have the ability to, like, just go chill on a beach all day and then remotely, like, uh, manage my business via text message, like, once a week. But I am starting to do more of the things that I enjoy doing and less the bullshit. And uh, that, you know, big come up with my quality of life and being that I'm able to do that, like more opportunities are coming to me. So like, again, like, you know, you, you, you write it down consistently, consistently put it out there. It just starts to happen. The other, uh, you know, the thing I've been on the cover of uh, Forbes. So this is really interesting because, again, that's one that was a very, very, I try to write goals that are like seemingly unattainable. Like yep. absolutely just ridiculous. And honestly, if I don't accomplish like the goal, like ultimately I will still be in a very, very good place, even if I fall short. And that was the thing with Forbes. Everybody knows like Forbes magazine, that's like a big deal. Like, like who am I? Like it's a street kid, like former drug dealer. Why, how could I ever be in Forbes? But you know what? Let's get it on paper. Let's write it down. Unreasonable. We'll take whatever action, see what happens. So I actually got featured in an article a month ago and you know it was a shared article there's about four other entrepreneurs and they all did a really really great job um two days ago i got a link sent to me and i got a full feature in forbes like wow yeah and you know although that's not my goal i've been on the cover of forbes that's what i write down it's like it's fucking crazy man and it's, it's and happening actually, it's happening you know, yeah it, 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 it is and, and, and honestly like the, the, the charity thing, like, you know, that's something that's very, very important to me. I will donate a million dollars, you know, to charity in, 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 in a year. And, you know, last year I was fortunate enough to be in a position to, to do, you know, six figures and we're going to keep plugging away till we hit that. And then we'll, it'll go to 10 million, you know, that's right. because you got to put it out there, man. You got to put it out there because whether you realize it or not, whether you think it's a waste of time or not, I, mean, I just told you, I didn't feel 
like it was necessarily something that I could do. I didn't necessarily, I couldn't necessarily see myself in that position, but you put it out there, you yeah. take the action, it starts to happen. You know, the other thing is the, uh, the planner you'd mentioned, that's super important. Like you yeah. can't get ahead. You can't be productive in a day if you don't have a fucking plan. You got to write down the things you want to do for the day and then you execute on them. And not the normal shit, right? Everybody knows, oh, show up to work at this time. No, like, what are you going to do when you're there? That's like above and beyond that separates you from everybody else in there, right? How many customers, how many, how many of your clients, uh, potential customers are you going to follow up with, right? Like how many sales calls are you going to make? How many cold calls are you going to make? Like all tangible things. Like I'm going to make 25 cold calls today. I'm going to follow up with 10 customers. I'm going to send this customer this gift. They spent a ton of money with me and that's just the right thing to do. So you have to make it tangible and you have to execute. That's, that's awesome. awesome. Hey, I wanted to ask him real quick, and it's something that you've mentioned is the giving away stuff and, and the community mm -hmm. service, the, the, the charitable, charitable stuff. And that's been really, really important. And so we did it early on, myself and my two partners, we, we did it, but we never really included our company in on it. Like we didn't include mm -hmm. the employees in on it. And I think that was a mistake in the beginning. So about huge four, mistake, brother. four years ago, we started telling our employees, hey, your job, when you do this and, and you create this, this is what's happening for these children in India, these children in Nicaragua. This is what's happening when we, we do the, and, and we started detailing out so that our employees could get on board and it would be part of our culture that we're a culture yeah. of givers. We're a culture of givers and, and we are blessed to be a blessing. We're a river. We want, we want to be a river. So the money flows through us. Right. And, uh, and so when we started doing that and we started including everybody on it, we literally saw our business double and then double again. And, and it's funny, man, right? It you're giving money away or that's amazing. Good mm -hmm. for you. And now thank you for telling me that. I didn't, you know, know you guys were heavily involved with that. That, uh, makes me like you even more. <laughs> yeah, man, we did. It's, it's fascinating. We love, we, we, and, and I felt uncomfortable at first talking about it. Mm -hmm. Um, because, because you, I don't want, I don't it's want almost like you on the it's, back. It's almost it. like you're more comfortable talking about like your own personal income than how much you give. Like, I don't know why it's, yeah. it's, it's yeah. a weird thing. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's, it's a, it's a fascinating thing. Yeah. We've, we've got, um, here in South Carolina, two feeding stations, one, one in North Carolina, then Nicaragua, there's 17, um, different ones that we have down there and, and, and we, we do, a, we do a lot I'm sure of that work. feels great. It's unbelievable, man. Yeah. So yeah. it's, it's, but, but including everybody in on it so they can all be part of the vision of where we're going as a company, it's invaluable. Dude, you change your life. You change your life because most people will never do that. They'll never like a lot of people, I think, you know, human beings are, are inherently good by nature, but most people just don't take that extra initiative, right? Like they would want to, they see something on Facebook. Oh, I'd want to do that, but they don't take the action to go do it or go scout out an opportunity to give back or, you know, volunteer. And the fact that, you know, you guys and, and myself were in a position to, to put people in that position, it's yep. life changing because it, it, it'll literally change their life forever. Yeah. Hey, Chris. So, yeah, I love stories. Everyone loves good stories. And, and your story so far has been incredible, obviously. The struggle, rising up. And it would be awesome to be able to kind of come full circle and say, okay, and, and here's where he is 20 years from now. But if you don't mind, I would love for you to mention just real briefly kind of how some of your story has come full circle with your mom, if you don't mind mentioning that. Oh, yeah. Um, no, no, I think no, that's no. super, super so that, awesome. Yeah, yeah. So... So, you know, as I said, you know, my mom was very young when she had me, which doesn't excuse like what she was doing, but uh, I never really lived with my mom. Like there were times where I went, you know, there are different periods of my life where I would stay with her for like a couple of days or like um, ultimately when I ended up uh, living with my grand, my biological grandmother, like my grandmother would kick me out. I'd go like stay with my mom for a short period of time. But, um, you know, just to be frank and just to, to be direct and paint the accurate picture, like. I always viewed my mom as a loser because I mean, like just that's what she was. I mean, she was never really a mom to me. Like I, you know, when you think the mom, right? Like that's not, it's always been a challenge over the years. Like on mother's day, when I have to get a, a card for her, it's always been hard to like, to find something that I, I would feel comfortable giving her that would just be, wouldn't be weird. Right. Just because of the relationship that we had, she's lived in her, the projects her entire life. You know, she's uh last 10 years she you know she hasn't she hasn't worked she 
convinced herself that she couldn't work due to any number of reasons. She's truly been diagnosed with every personality disorder and psychological uh, disorder known to man. You know, uh, I know that she's been on like all kinds of different medications. I've had to, you know, uh, financially kind of come to her rescue a couple times over the last few years because she takes care of my little sister. Um, you know, I, I hadn't talked to her in a couple of years just because she's just ne- like, she, she was just like negative, like all the interactions and experiences that we had, she made me feel a way when you get to the point where I'm at, as far as being just very cognizant of the importance of your surroundings, the people you surround mm-hmm. yourself with energy, like I'm, I'm very, I'm very, I'll call it like stingy with my energy, right? Like Mm -hmm. I only want to invest it in the, in the the areas that are are, are going to be most beneficial. And I don't want to put my energy around bad energy because I want to feel good. I spent a lot of years, majority of my life, I've I've spent not feeling good. Now I want to feel good as much as possible. So (laughs) I had to distance, had to distance myself from her for a number of reasons. And, you know, like we, we live, she's in Boston, I'm in Tampa. So like, wasn't so much really, you know, our like physical, like being like together, but you know, like I, I had to block her and stop taking, I mean, she was just sending random ass texts. God, this woman obviously took too much medication or not enough and had a lot of problems. Recently, um, we got reconnected due to the fact my grandmother, her mother um, was, you know, sick and I wanted to reach out and just, you know, talk to my mother to find out what was going on with my grandmother. And, we talked for a little bit and it was, you know, kind of awkward, right? I don't really do awkward, but if it would have been awkward for like a normal person, right? But, you know, the conversation went like, it, it was cordial. And uh, uh, I would say about two weeks, super interesting, asked, asking this uh, Tyler, a couple of weeks ago, I got a, uh, a text, you know, from my mom. Obviously, I had uh, <laughs> unblocked her after a conversation. And I woke up to a text and it, you know, basically said something along the lines of, uh, you know, that she's she's back to work. She for the first time in 10 years, she's back to work. She's a, at a 7-Eleven. She's an assistant manager at a 7-Eleven. And she finally had just told herself enough times, this is what she's going to do. And the reason she's going to do it is because she has set a goal to, for the first time in her life, she's like 51 years old. She wants to move out of the projects and get her own place. And then wow. she wrote, you know, some other, she's like, you know, sometimes I, I, I go on Facebook under a friend's account and I look at the stuff that you're saying on there. And it's all so true. And guys, that, like, it was shocking to see that. I mean, my mother is like the opposite of me. And it was like, like, holy shit. And it really, really made me feel good. And I'll tell you, like, I had nothing to do with that, right? We didn't talk for two years. She decided to make these changes, like, on her own. But it, it's super compelling and interesting because it just really puts into perspective that if this woman, with everything that she's been through and everything that she's done, the person that she's like been the last 51 years, right? If at this stage of her life, she can make a conscious decision to change and set a goal to get better and be better, like anybody can, can right? Mm-hmm. Anybody. You hear that all the time, like anybody, anybody, but don't know, no, truly. Like I'm now convinced. Maybe before this, I didn't think anybody could. Like, I'm truly <laughs> think that anybody can. And yeah. guys, like, she, it, she's serious about it too. Like, God, you said, I, you I, said, I, I you said, like, on your Instagram story that she, you were like, man, she's hustling. She's like 14 hour Dude, day. And she's like, she's 70 like, hours. She's, yeah, she's like, you know, I'm taking home like a, like a, like a grand a week. And just hearing my mother say that, who's like lived off the system, that it's, it's fucking insane. And, you know, she, uh, it's like I'm working 70 hour weeks. I'm just like, whoa, like you go from 10 years, not working to putting in 70 hours uh, a week. And she'd work like 36 days straight. That's and it, awesome. it just truly shows you like the, the, the direct connection between, you know, taking action and setting goals. And I think that's kind of where we're reeling all in here with what we just said. So. So. That's awesome. I love it. Hey, man. So what we love to do on the uh, on the podcast is ask every guest that we have on. And I think at some point we're going to do like a compilation of like everybody's different. Everybody's answer. Oh, that'd be awesome. awesome. But it is the Sales Wolves podcast. And we've kind of got our own definitions of what that is. Everybody kind of takes a little bit of a different, uh, has a little different take on it. But what would you say if you had to say, you know, what is a sales wolf? What would you say the definition of a sales wolf would be? I mean, every day, you know, there's a, there's a game being played, whether you realize it or not, you know, if you're a sales wolf, you get up every day and you realize it's you or them. And honestly, like your objective 
each and every day should be to fucking dominate. Whether it's actually closing the sale, whether it's like helping people with other things, whether it's just solving problems with things that you won't directly monetize or benefit from. If you can develop that mindset and go out and attack each and every day, doing the best job you can with every interaction that you encounter, there is truly no limit to how far you will go. And I think that is kind of what separates the sales wolves from the sales sheep. Is that, is that mentality, you know, are you getting up every day, lacing up, you know, your boots and go, going on the fucking work path? Or are you just, you know, throwing on a, a poorly fitted, you know, suit, and dirty ass stained shirt and going through the fucking motions? Guys, as a salesperson, the thing is, you know, as a salesperson, you have the unique opportunity to, to, to create your own legacy from a financial standpoint. You know, the overwhelming majority of, of society will go and they will punch a clock to the end of time. The overwhelming majority struggle and live paycheck to paycheck. I think it's like 76% of, uh, of, of people in, in, in the United States. As a salesperson, you are in a position to go out there and you, your outcome is predicated off your actions. You know, and, and that's, that's something that I think people need to really think about and, and, and celebrate that fact and take the corresponding level of action. Absolutely. Awesome. Man, that's awesome. Hey, where can people find you uh, online and on social media? Yeah, so uh, my, uh, my Instagram is at Chris Cavallini, uh, two L's in my last name, and my Facebook is Christopher Cavallini. Okay. And then what's, uh, what's your website? So well, I have my, my, my personal website, but you know, we'll talk in the business. If anybody wants to check that out, like, you know, we didn't really talk about that. I'm glad that we did. And I'd rather much talk about what we did, but, uh, okay. like if anybody wants to look at that, you know, we, we do a uh, healthy meal prep for people that are looking to, you know, build muscle, lose fat, just be healthier. Don't have time to cook a lot. I mean, we obviously have a, a large, uh, percentage of clients that are in sales, right? Salespeople are busy, right? Mm -hmm. Get up, get after it all day. And, a lot of times, you know, they go however long without eating and like, shit, I'm starving. And then what do you do? You go through the, 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 the closest, the, go to the nearest convenience, which typically mm -hmm. isn't the best thing to put in your body. But at the end of the day, you know, the quality of your life is directly proportional to how good you feel. And diet That's is right. truly everything. And I don't say this to, to, to try to sell you. I don't care if you use my company, but I, I, I hope that people pay closer attention to the things that they're putting in their body because yeah. their quality of life is ultimately determined by the way they feel and you know you get your nutrition right you know you look feel and perform better and you know as a salesperson you know you've got to be at the top of your game and you're not going to be able to do that if you're putting fast food in your body all the time. if you don't have health you absolutely have nothing if you don't have your health you have nothing it's what, what's your what, what's your range of your <clears throat> distribution like how where where do you ship to we're a national we're, we're, we're a national company yeah we ship all over the country i did the not re i did not realize that because I use a meal prep company every week because um, I'm on the road yeah. four nights a week. Well, maybe so. when we met back in you know the beginning of 2016, maybe we weren't doing that yet. You know, our, our operation expanded and, um, uh, you know, I think we've been shipping nationally about a year and a half. But the website is nutritionsolutions.com. Wow. And, uh, okay. you know, we work with everything from professional athletes to, uh, you know, white collar individuals that are just looking to be healthy and you know, just feel better, have more energy and uh, don't have time to cook, but, you know, want to look good naked. So. <laughs> I love looking at myself naked. <laughs> so you look good naked, not look at yourself. Oh. <laughs> yeah. All right, Chris, man, I cannot thank you enough, uh, not only just for being on uh, the podcast, for but for opening up a lot of areas that, you know, the average person may uh, shy away from putting That's out right. there. But, man, that stuff, like – the struggle is the most important part of your story um, because that's where it came from. And man, I'm so, uh, so happy to have you and on And that here. was raw and authentic and I loved it. Thank you yep. so much, man. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you guys. Yes, sir. All right, guys. I appreciate so, that. So with that, this is uh, episode 44 of the Sales Wolves podcast. Tyler you, Harris. Joseph Caldwell. And Chris Cavallini. And we are the Sales Wolves. You can Wolves. howl too if you want to. <laughs> I love uh, you. Uh, <laughs> All right, man. Appreciate it, Chris. Thank you, Chris. All right, guys. Thank you. Thank you.